The massive container ship blocking the Suez Canal, uh, further stressing an already strained supply chain. Brian Sullivan knows all about this and costing billions of dollars. Uh, he joins us now with more. Hope you get a chance. Brian, you got some time on your hands uh, if you, if you want to watch it. But don't look for a lot to happen in that movie. But how long is this going to be closed, this, the, the, this canal? Can you imagine what? It's a 1,300-foot ship. Can you imagine if that thing really dug in the side of the, uh, of the soil there and, and the dredging that would be required? You think about getting a car stuck. I mean, that is just unbelievable. I don't think we can fathom what it really uh, entails. No, I mean, I, the, the way I described it on Worldwide Exchange, Joe, was that you, you park your giant SUV parallel and then two people move in and you've got an inch between the bumpers and you're trying to get out. That's kind of what it's like. This is not only a big ship. This is one of the biggest container ships in the world. 20,000 of those containers that you see on the back of 18 wheelers. There's 20,000 of those on this. Now, the worst case, Joe, is the Suez Canal. We all know one of the most important waterways, transit points, hubs, whatever, in the world could be closed for weeks. Doesn't mean it will. That's kind of the worst case. That is a bad case. There is some hope this weekend on Mother Nature. There is actually an unusually high tide that is going to flow in. And officials in the Suez, and I was chatting with somebody in Egypt yesterday, they hope that that's just enough to lift the pressure on the bottom of this ship, which you can see is turned completely sideways, completely dug in in the mud. Now, the Suez right now remains closed. What's the impact here? Right now, we'll have to wait and see. The Suez is more for goods that are coming from Asia to Europe. That ship, by the way, was going from China to Rotterdam. It had things like Ducati motorcycles and beer from Heineken and stuff like that on that ship and others. Now, right now, many ships are considering the longer route. There's over 200 ships at anchor kind of waiting. Can they get into the Suez? Should they wait it out or go the long way around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa? That could add $500,000 to a trip. There's also the increased risk of piracy. You've got to go through some dangerous waters to do that. By the way, some impacts on this, guys. Oil prices, they're on the rise. How come? Well, if you're waiting for a load of oil or gas and it's not there, you got to buy it from somewhere. I can confirm yesterday that two cargoes of LNG from Chenier of Texas, it's their customers, not there, but they sold it to the customers, are being rerouted from Texas around Africa. They're not even going to try to go through the Suez. They said, you know what? Let's just go around. They're on their way to Asia. Of course, shipping rates are already inflated. Supply chains are tight. And Smith Salvage was hired, Joe. Smith Salvage is kind of the, the Navy SEALs of rescue. And a lot of people say, why don't they just unload the cargo? They can't. There's no cranes. The only way to get those containers off the ship would be by helicopter. You played <laughs> scenes from an Italian restaurant. Remember Brenda and Eddie, the popular steadies, the king of the queen of the prom? Well, the big water bed they bought with the bread they'd saved for a couple years is sitting on a container. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.